studies, uh, we see that quite a few Muslim students travel to Western countries as international students to build their futures and uh, they like they want to get updated in their future lives. But, but, but I mean, like uh, when they are finishing their studies, uh, they end up configuring to the non-Muslim culture of alcohol and drugs and trade their hereafter for or the environment. So my question is to you that what advice would you give to this Muslim youth? In addition to that, what advice would, would you give to the Muslim to turn into like uh, not themselves turn into the alcohol or drugs? Like how can they keep themselves from their non-Muslim culture and keep focus on the Muslim culture and practice their uh, slam and go with the, I mean, uh, flow? It's a really good question also. I think that if you're thinking that this is a battle of cultures, then um, a traditional culture will always lose. The world is modernizing. Um, and a student is, is finding themselves coming from a very conservative village or city or family where everything was very restricted and confined. And all of a sudden they find themselves floating in space. Uh, there's drugs in the same dorm room as them, right? There are, there's, um, you know, there's, it's, a, it's a, a sexually promiscuous society and everything is open and free and there is no right and wrong. Nobody's guilting you about anything. There's, there's the, the moral compass is completely gone. Right, and you're in this in a, in a new environment where you holding on to your values makes you the strange person. So what what used to be sinful is now celebrated, and what used to be uh, looked up upon looked uh, looked up to, is now considered strange and out out of place. Right, and human beings have a tendency we we want to fit in. We we don't like to be the strange one on the outside. We want to belong. Human beings have a natural tendency to want to belong, and now you find yourself in a new world where clearly. Uh, you came here for your studies or your work or whatever else, but you don't feel like you belong. And in order to belong, it's not like somebody turns to alcohol or drugs and other haram things overnight. It's just that they wanted to fit in and they went with the guys to the bar one night and they just had a, a sip of water. They didn't drink anything. And the next time they got a, a Coke or something. And then, the, you know, it just kind of, it goes one little step at a time, right? It doesn't happen overnight. Now, there are some people who are wait, couldn't wait to leave Pakistan or Bangladesh or Cairo, or they couldn't wait to leave because they've been wanting to party all this time, but their uncle wouldn't let them. Right. And now they get here and they're like, ah, <laughs> you know, so they, <laughs> I'm not talking about those guys or girls. They, they were going to do what they were going to do. Their, their hearts had already surrendered to that kind of rebellion to begin with. Right. Yeah. Um, it's not like they're hopeless, but that their intention is something else, but there are people who slip and over time they, their guard goes down. They start deteriorating in, their, in, in their, the safeguards they had in place, right? And that's, I, I believe those are the students that you're asking me about, right? So what, 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 are, what can they do? To me, I think we have to, if we don't realize that our Islam is not our heritage, our Islam is, it has to be rediscovered by us. Like you have to, in a sense, become Muslim all over again when you're in this environment, because when you were in a, an Islamic or conservative or traditional environment, you didn't have to hold on to your Islam. Your environment was holding on to Islam, right? And now you're not in that environment. So the only one that can hold on to Islam is you. But if the only anchor you had, the only thing holding you to your religion was the people around you, the sound of the adhan, the halal food everywhere, the conservative family values, if that was the thing that was holding your Islam together, then your Islam is a product of your environment, not you. It's not yours. It belongs to that environment. So if you take yourself out of that environment, then your Islam got left behind. And here you are. And if you start feeling that Islam is getting shaky because the environment has changed, that means that that Islam didn't have deep enough roots, right? Because if our religion is a, you know, Hindu kids, Born in India, Buddhist kids, you know, if they're raised in a Buddhist family or a traditional Hindu family, right? They're Hindu because they were raised in a Hindu family or they were born in a Buddhist country or whatever, right? You can argue the same with Muslims. I'm Muslim because I was born in a Muslim country. I was raised in a Muslim family. But that, why am I a Muslim? The answer to that was okay so long as you were in that environment. But the moment you came in this environment, you have to come up with a new answer to that question. Why am I a Muslim? 
now that the answer, because I come from a Muslim family, because I belong to Muslim culture, because I come from a Muslim country, those answers are not enough. They are simply not enough. Now it has to be, I am Muslim because I'm convinced of Islam. I'm Muslim because I believe, I'm, I have absolute conviction that this Quran is not man-made. That this man named Muhammad, first of all, sallallahu alayhi wa is not a fiction. He's in fact a, 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 a real human being and he's not a liar. That he didn't come up with something on his own, that this was given to him by revelation. That there is, there is such a thing as a God. And he does speak directly with us. These are pretty heavy claims to really revisit yourself, right? But if you and I don't revisit this conclusion and strengthen our foundation, first, there's that intellectual foundation. Then it's really, I, I, I think of it as you have the foundation of a building and you build a building on top of it, right? The foundation of our Islam cannot be our origins. The foundation of our Islam must be our intellectual conviction. And on top of that, you build your spiritual strength. On top of that, the prayer will help you. On top of that, the recitation of Quran will help you. On top of that, good company will help you. But if that foundation isn't there, then you can do spiritual practices and still keep messing up. Right, because the spirituality is not built on top of a. It's not afluha sabit wa faruha sabit wa faruha fi sama. Quran says that la ilaha illallah is like a tree. The roots are deep and the branches go into the sky. Right, and that's actually one of the things that I. Um, that was my first step into to serious step into Islam. I was praying and then not praying. I was hanging out with the the religious guys. Then I was hanging out with the party guys. I was, I was all over the place. And then I got exposed to the Quran in a certain way that it dawned on me, this isn't human. This is just not human. Even though I'm uh, culturally, I'm a believer. Anthropologically, I'm a Muslim. My own claim is I'm Muslim. I believe in God. But it didn't hit here, deep in here, that this is the absolute truth. <laughs> Until it becomes abundantly clear to them, this is the absolute truth. It is the absolute truth. When that dawned on me, something inside me shifted. Now, I didn't just come here to further, or I'm not studying to further my career. But because that, that used to be a goal. I, I want to further my career. I want to get a job. I want to graduate. I want to get a good job. I want to get move on in life. I want to be able to have this much money by the time I'm at this age. I want to have these investments. You don't have these financial goals, family goals. You have these goals. But when this clicked, then these goals were only steps to a much bigger goal. Like if this is the word of Allah, and this is really what was given to us as a mission, then yeah, I still want to be an engineer. I still want to be a PhD in physics. I still want to be a doctor, but I want to be a doctor for a larger reason. I want to contribute to this. I want to be a contributor. I can, this life can't be just about me. And when you, when you realize that, even psychologists now talk about this, right? There are people who live their life for impact, right? They, they, their goal in life is impact. And if their goal in life is impact, then these are the guys that are not partying, even when they're university, everybody around them is going to the party. They're still working. They're still focused. They'll have a good time here and there, but they're not distracted in life. They have a clear goal. And their goal isn't even graduation, isn't money, isn't prestige, isn't everybody's going to say, I got a master's. My parents are going to be so proud of me. None of that is significant anymore. They want to lead a life of impact. And that's what this intellectual conviction does. It's, it, it, it throws a higher goal. I'll give you an image that I want you to imprint in your mind. Like when you're, uh, imagine a mountain climber, right? And a mountain climber throws a hook up to the closest rock he can get, and then he's going to pull himself up, right? Now, if your hook is only five feet above you, the, the maximum you will reach is five feet. But if your hook is 20 feet above, the maximum you will reach is 20 feet. What does is, what is the intellectual conviction in Islam do? It makes you throw your hook up into the sky. So while everybody else will just, I just want to graduate. I just want to get married. I just want to do this. I just want to do this. Their, 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 their hooks are so low. And you're like, I'll get all those things too, but I've aimed so much higher now. I'm going to keep on going. And that keeps a person from not leading a distracted life. Their objectives are clear. And all these, what other people consider major milestones are just stepping stones to them. 
because their life is about so much more. When that greater goal, that greater vision concept gets internalized in the depths of your soul, then you're not going to have trouble fighting Fitna and university. You have something so much more powerful than your hormonal urges or your desire to fit in or your desire to just have a good time or de-stress. Those things will become so low because you have something so much more powerful. Like the, the, the fire of this, this thinking is so much more intense than any other fire shaitan can put inside. That's what it does. And really, at the, the way, if you, if you think about it, the Sahaba were not supernatural human beings. They were normal people. They wanted the same things you and I want, really. What is it that made them such visionaries? Like, well, why were they not distracted and slipping the way we slip so easily? What made it like that? You know, it's, it, they're, still, they're still blood coursing through their veins. They're still made of the same organic matter. Allah put a ruh inside them. He put a ruh inside you and me. There was something that was at the heart of it. There was, there, was a, there was a conviction that was at the heart of it that drove everything else. So I say, when you come and you say, I need, to, I need to hold on to my religion, I'm slipping. If you realize this, then you have to come back to why am I a Muslim to begin with? And actually, that's why when, when students come to me and say, I want to study, I want to learn something. Well, well first, build your intellectual foundation. We're going to learn, think about learning Islam. Everything else about Islam can come. Build that intellectual foundation first, and then we'll build a spiritual foundation on top of that. And to me, for myself, that intellectual foundation was actually the, the life of the Prophet Wasallam, And it was um, just, the, just the miraculous nature of the Quran. Like, that's why I wrote the book Divine Speech and did those seminars, because they transformed me. Like, just understanding that stuff was transformative to me, so I wanted to share that with everybody else. Look, this, this is why I, th I just I absolutely believe it can't be human. And here's why, you know? So I hope that that helps with that question, inshallah. Thank you very much. You're quite welcome.